Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. And without wasting any time today, let me turn to my guest for this week, Mr. Jaswan Singh. Hello, sir. Welcome to Walk the Talk. Thank and how you. grateful I am that you found time. I know you have a lot to do. <laughs> Thank you. You, uh, you mind if I describe you as one of, one of our most famous victims of friendly fire? <laughs> it's perhaps not friendly fire. Uh, it's. Uh, I've been wounded by my own kith and kin. So friendly fire um, has a different connotation in military term. It's accidental. Unintended. Unintended. This is not friendly fire. It's really something like what, uh, and I, I am not, I am alluding to it because it is a quotation. Winston Churchill uh, once said, no, 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 you, these are not pointing to the opposition benches saying, these are not my enemies. They look behind, they are sitting behind me. So I've really been uh, wounded, injured, and expelled by kids and kin, not by friendly. I hope now you don't get punished for quoting Winston Churchill. Why should I? <laughs> because it's now say? become dangerous to talk of <laughs> figures from history. Check out the day, day as a country. You, in fact, though you say it lightheartedly, your question is a very serious and deep import. The day a country and a people, irrespective of whether it's us or any other country, begins to imagine history, create an illusory uh, history back um, to create, as, as we were talking earlier, create a history based on cults. Right. And cult figures, as you said yourself, both living and dead. What are we now? The, the challenge to us in India today, I really think uh, we have to reflect on it very deeply. It's not a question of discovering new iconography. We have to learn to be iconoclasts. And we have to destroy a great many of the cults that have come around, come up, <coughs> around living and around dead people, I won't name any, unless we do that, how can you enter the 21st because century? Because in most of our political parties today, you can't question the leaders of today. But now you're coming to a state where you can't even question leaders of the past. So you begin to shut doors to everything. Right. But a very limited thought of today, and that limited thought of today doesn't want to read, it doesn't want to discuss, it, doesn't, it wants no discourse. A, a diktat is issued, what sort of a nation yes, are Kim, we? Kim, Kim Il-sung. <laughs> oh, my God, please, uh, don't uh, term us as Kim Il-sung, because it would be disastrous. Perhaps... Uh, so the mindset is the same. You know, what is the point? What is the point, my dear friend, for us to be eulogizing and praising that great piece of poetry by Tagore, I mean, Tagore, where the head is held high. And mind is without fear. And the mind is without fear. How do you hold your head high if you are constantly being asked to look down and bow? And how can the mind be without fear if the foundation of your discipline in the party, a political party, becomes fear? It's a very dangerous Have situation. you seen fear in the BJP? Oh, yes. Oh, since, yes. Since when? I don't want to, I don't want it to appear as if I'm tattling. But the fear has actually come into BJP thinking and uttering. Because I have lived and grown, uh, I've been in politics for 42 years now. And you've been in the army and then politics? That's it. That's all that I've done in my life. I joined the BJP when it was found. There was no fear. There was no fear. I think the fear began to came up. Tuba.com.